Well, after the first couple of months, she and Charlie didn't see much of each other except at breakfast. It was a marriage just like any other marriage. You're beautiful. Oh, I can't. Yes, you are. You're very, very beautiful. I've never been to six parties in my Extremely life. Extremely beautiful. My life. Oh, I've never even been up this late. It's a matter of habit. I wonder what the servants will think. They'll think we enjoyed ourselves. Yes. Didn't we? I don't see why you have to go straight out to the newspaper. You never should have married a newspaper man. They're worse than sailors. I absolutely adore you. Oh, Charles, even newspaper men have to sleep. I'll call Mr. Bernstein, have him put off my appointments until noon. What time is it? Oh, I don't know. It's late. It's early. Charles, do you know how long you kept me waiting last night while you went to the newspaper for ten minutes? What do you do on a newspaper in the middle of the night? Emily, my dear, your only correspondent is the Inquirer. Sometimes I think I'd prefer a rival of flesh and blood. Oh, Emily, I don't spend that much time on the newspaper. It isn't just the time. It's what you print, attacking the president. You mean Uncle John? I mean the president of the United States. He's still Uncle John. He's still a well-meaning fathead who's letting a pack of high-pressure crooks run his administration. This whole oil scandal. He happens to be the president, Charles, not you. That's a mistake that will be corrected one of these days. You, Mr. Bernstein, sent Junior the most incredible atrocity yesterday, Charles. I simply can't have it in the nursery. Mr. Bernstein is apt to pay a visit to the nursery now and then. Does he have to? Yes. Really, Charles? People will think... What I tell them to think. Dictionary.com, the American Dream, coined by J.T. Adams, Epic of America in 1931, is defined as a life of personal happiness and material comfort as traditionally sought by the individuals in the United States. <clears throat> in 1921, the stock market crashed, signaling the start of the Depression and leaving Americans to pick up the pieces and fight for the necessities. When the movie came out in 1941, Americans were still recovering from the Depression while simultaneously dealing with a country split over involvement in World War II. The American dream became a way for citizens to cling to hope that things could get better. It was known that to have the American dream, you should have a family, a house, and possibly a car. Soon this is what everyone was striving towards. People were convinced this is what they needed to be happy. In the breakfast montage, you see six different scenes that cover the nine years of Kane's first marriage. The first scene, you have Kane with his newly wed wife, Emily. He's happy and even willing to push appointments off for her. And the next scene, Emily states, Do you know how long you kept me waiting last night while you went to the newspaper for ten minutes? He's starting to spend more time away from home and become more immersed in work. In the third scene, Emily says she'd rather have a rival of flesh and blood. They then fight because she doesn't like what he's been saying about her uncle, who is the current president of the United States. She says, he's the president, Charles, not you. Which he replies with, that's a mistake that will be corrected one of these days. In the fourth scene, Cain and Emily have a fight over a gift that his subordinate, Mr. Bernstein, gave to, to be placed in the nursery. She's against it, while Cain wants to keep it just in case Mr. Bernstein comes over. The fifth is short and sweet. Emily says, people will think, while Charles cuts her off and says, what I want them to think. Sixth scene contains no dialogue, as Cain reads his paper, The Inquirer, and Emily reads the Chronicle in protest because his paper the Inquirer has basically taken over his life and left no room for her or their child. What makes this even more real is the fact that the film was based off newspaper mogul William Randolph Hearst. Hearst had been take, had taken over the San Francisco Examiner from his father in 1886. He began building the newspaper empire and started hiring the best journalists and he even started making up stories to build circulation and make people think what he wanted them to think. He ended up with 28 papers total and nine magazines. In 1903, Hearst married his wife, Millicent. Um, their marriage basically slowly started falling apart, while his newspaper career grew more and more until they separated in the mid-twenties. 
When Miss Citizen Kane came out, Hearst was not pleased. Adrian Russell from the St. James Encyclopedia states, Hearst launched a full-scale campaign against the movie and its director, effectively blocking the film's distribution by threatening lawsuits, running venomous reviews, and yanking advertising. So using his experience and his ability to have these newspapers and journals print whatever he wants, he was able to basically shut down the film and have the release be horrible, and it didn't do very well. Both of these men had the American dream. They had good jobs, wife, children, very nice houses. They were doing well and excelling with the economy while it suffered under wars, recessions, and depressions. Kane and Hearst had what was considered to be the American dream, yet they weren't happy. They gave up their wives and families and focused on work and furthering their power. The American dream was not good enough for these men. They were unable to achieve happiness and kept searching for more. This scene and these men show that the American dream, this idea that people were chasing after, and still are, is an empty dream. What they believed could be the key to their happiness failed them. Failed them and left them searching for happiness through power and their career.